Hi everyone, hope you're doing great. Hope you're having, you know, a good day wherever you are. Um, happy November. By the time you're seeing this, it will be November. Um, and this is my October knitting video. So my name is Anna, I live in Seattle and I am a knitter and crafter extraordinaire. Um, and today I'm just gonna be talking you through what I always talk you through every month. <laughs> my works in progress, my finished objects, um, my knitting plans, etc. So I'm burning daylight here. It's getting later and I don't have a whole lot of light left so I'm gonna get started. Um, so the first finished object I have you saw for the first time in the last video and it was almost done. Um, this is the Lupinous by Jules Coco. It's a test knit that I worked on um, kind of in the beginning of October I guess. I think I finished this about two weeks ago now um, and it's really gorgeous. It has this beautiful <clears throat> leaf motif on the yoke um, and then it's just stuck in it from there but it was really fun to make so many good color options a lot of testers have done really cool colors the fit is incredible the short row shaping on this is phenomenal the pattern is super well written so when it is finally released i will let you all know so you can um, check it out but yeah just to talk about this briefly since i did talk about it last time this is the lupinous by jules coco um, and then the yarns that I use. So this brown um, is something that I dyed. It was like a gray color originally and I dyed it with tea. Um, the pink is a Busilla tapestry wool. Um, I don't, oh, I do have some right here. So this is the pink. There we go. It's the Busilla Evermatch tapestry wool in the color 1953. And then the white is a silk merino that I had in my stash um, that I've actually used a lot recently for socks. So here it is, it fits wonderfully. Um, the sleeves are like a full length. The one thing that I wish was a little bit different um, was that the sleeves were a little bit tighter. It's a little bit loose. Um, I wish there had just been a few more decreases to tighten up the sleeve, um, but it has a lovely Italian bind off, same on the bottom. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with this. It's really cozy and lovely. So here it is. Um, my next finished object, which you've heard me yabber on about quite a few times now, is my ranunculus. Um, I ended up making it a t-shirt and it's kind of wrinkly because it was on the chair. Um, but this is a ranunculus by Midori Hirose in a silk merino yarn from Ice Yarns. Um, it's the burgundy color. And so I ended up making it a t-shirt length because the yarn itself, here you can kind of see with this tail that's not woven in, is really fine. This is actually two strands held together that have kind of <laughs> felted together because I've blocked this and worn it. Um, there you go. So you can see like this, it's basically like a lace or a cobweb weight. Like it's very, very fine, probably a lace weight. Um, so I held two strands of the lace weight together to get a fingering, and then I actually knitted this a needle size down from the pattern. This is a size five millimeter needle. The pattern calls for a six. So the fabric I got is a bit more dense, um, and my gauge is quite a lot smaller than the original pattern, which is what I wanted. I wanted it to be a little bit more dense. Um, so I was originally hoping to make it long sleeves, um, but I did not have enough yarn. I had 150 grams of the single stranded, so I ended up with 75 grams double stranded, which is plenty for a short sleeve. I even have a little bit left over. Um, so I think I'm gonna either add some, I'm probably gonna add some more length to the body. It's it's cropped on me, but not super cropped. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. The yoke is gorgeous. The fabric that it made is really pretty. It has a, this yarn is really nice. It has a really nice sheen to it um, and a good drape. And I ended up on the sleeves, um, I did add a little bit of length. So in the pattern, well, I made a lot of modifications to this. The raglan on mine is much, much longer um, than in the original pattern. And then I knitted a few rounds longer on the short sleeve and then I did a folded over cuff. So I knitted, probably, I think it's like six extra rounds and then folded it under and knit it down while casting off. So it makes this really nice cuff that looks very clean and professional. I probably could have done it, bound it off a little bit looser, but then it probably would have gone a little bit lettucey on me. So 
I've ironed this to get it to lay flat. Um, so this is about as good as it's gonna get, I think, but it does re look really nice. Um, it's a great color for fall, but it's also lightweight enough that I could wear it in the springtime. It'd be great for over dresses and skirts and things. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I like it a lot. Um, and I was having mixed feelings about the ranunculus. I know it's a very popular pattern and people love, love, love to make it. After I finished the yoke um, and realized I was going to have to do like quite a bit more raglan, um, I kind of lost steam on it for a while just because it was so much stockinette and like it just wasn't going as fast as people talk about but now that I've made one I can see why people want to make another one because it just uses so little yarn and it's so versatile um so I may make some more of these in the future so that's finished ob finished object number two and then my last finished object which you have kind of seen before is these socks so you'd seen the first one before I've uh, I finished it in September and then I finished the second one in October. So these are just two little vanilla socks. These are toe up socks. This was my first time doing toe up socks. So you've got the toe up wedge toe, short row heel, and then um, I did mine in a three by one rib just because I, I like the look of a ribbed sock. Um, and then I did a one by one rib on the top. And then for my bind off, I just did a normal bind off and I used a much much larger needle I think I knit the cuff on two millimeter needles and then bound off on a 3.5 it's still a little bit tight um so I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that I may have to pull the bind off out again and redo it but overall I'm really happy with these this yarn is the same silk merino that I used for my lupinous sweater um but I dyed this myself so this is dyed just kind of with not kind of just with some writ powder dye the royal blue color and then there's also some yellow in there as well it was just kind of my first experiment like painting almost hand painting it on so there's speckles and lots of color splotches and I really like these I like the yellow contrast heels and toes and cuffs I think they're very fun and sunny and these are just really lovely and cozy and I'm excited to have them the only thing is uh, this is now my third pair of hand knit socks and I, so I have two other pairs and both of them, I have worn holes in the toes on the same foot. It's my right, no, my left foot. Um, when I wear them in my boots, I get a hole in the toe. So I'm e gonna have to learn how to darn here in a second. And I was a little bit worried because this sock, which has a hole in it, is the same yarn as this sock so I need to either figure out a way to reinforce the toes or just not wear them in my boots anymore um but while we're on the topic of that this is the first pair of socks I ever made um they're a pattern by summer knits not I don't remember her name but it's the simple sock pattern I don't remember what the pattern is honestly I will link it down below for you but this is made in an alpaca and I knit it on a bit larger needles than the pattern recommends. I think I made it on a 2.75 because that's just the smallest I had at the time. So they were a little bit big um, and kind of loose. So I tried to felt them. I put them through the washer and the dryer and it actually worked really well. Um, they did shrink down a little bit and they're a little bit more felted, um, which is nice because now the foot is super thick. They're like a very thick and hard wearing sock. Um, and the heel kind of felted a bit, both through going through the dryer and then just by wearing them um so they're a lot sturdier now so because I was unsure if you could felt alpaca I've never really heard of anyone felting alpaca but I'm here to tell you that you can like this is the sole of the sock on the inside and it's pretty similar on the outside and that's probably from a combination of felting in the dryer and wearing um but now that I know that I can felt alpaca and it makes it a little bit sturdier I'm more inclined to use it for socks again because I think now it's going to be super sturdy and it's also just super comfortable, very soft, very squishy. Um, this is a yarn that my mother-in-law got me just from a local alpaca farm in Texas. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to figure out how to darn the toes on my socks. So I probably will not be wearing my vanillas, um, in boots because I don't want them to be ruined but they're very comfortable the fit is good I don't love the short row heel honestly I think the heel flap and gusset heel does fit better 
Um, so I'll probably go back to that. The only reason I wanted to do toe up was because I'd never done it before and also because I had only like 35 grams of this yarn that I had dyed. So I just split it in half and then I wanted to do toe up so I could make them as long as possible. And I had to do some fiddling at the end, like one was sizably longer than the other so I had to pull it out and then read it a little bit. But they worked out great, they're the same length and I'm really excited to wear these. I may wear them tomorrow. So that is my last finished object of the day. Um, on to whips. I'll just move through this one really quickly because you saw it in my last video. This is the Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. Um, I've made a little bit of progress on this. I don't remember. I think I may have split for sleeves the last time you saw it. Um, I may not have, but I've split for sleeves and I've done a little bit. This is really slow. Not making super fast progress on it, which is probably, which is like a negative feedback loop because because it's moving slowly I don't want to work on it and since I don't want to work on it I'm not making any progress um I'm really excited to have it done I really like this yarn this is the Patton's classic wool merino it's I think it's discontinued this particular one but I do love Patton's classic wool this is their natural mix color it's a worsted weight and I'm making the sweater on 5.5 millimeter needles and the um, button band is on four and a half you do it at the same time um, and I've made the first buttonhole and I have to do a little bit more before the next buttonhole. Um, I think I'm also discouraged just because it looks really small, but I know as soon as I wash it, it will grow quite a lot because it's half fisherman's rib. Um, it will grow quite a lot. So I'm making slow progress on this. I'm almost done with my second skein of yarn. So this, they're 100 gram skeins. I'm almost done with the second 200 grams. And then I think when I finish this, I'm gonna move to the sleeves. Just cause I like to do sleeves cause you can just see your progress a little bit better and feels like you're making more progress. So I think I'll go to the sleeves after I finish this. I have about 15 grams of this left. So I'm plotting along on this. I'm hopeful, my goal, which I'm just now deciding that it's my goal is to have this done by the end of the year, um, which I don't think is unrealistic. So. Stay tuned for more progress on this. I love it. I like the pattern. It's very nice. It's very well written. It's just slow. So I will keep going on this. Um, my next whip, which I don't think you've seen before, is this. This is the Cathedral Dome Sweater by Kristen Viola Odegaard. It's in the book Scandinavian Sweaters that I have from her. Um, and this pattern is not on Ravelry. I looked for it everywhere to put in my queue and like in my project page and it, it does not exist on Ravelry. So um, I do have a project page for this, but it's not linked to the pattern, so there aren't any pictures up, but this is what it looks like. It's stranded color work, yoke, um, and then there's some color work on the cuffs and the bottom. So I just today, like actually just before filming this while I was waiting for my battery to charge, finished the cuff and bound off. I did an Italian bind off because it's pretty. Um, and it's a little wonky. <laughs> like, I think my tension was a little funky here at the bottom, so I hope that blocks out. Um, but yeah, that's the cuff. There's the yoke. I think it's super pretty. Um, I like that it has kind of a combination of knit and pearl stitches in the color work. It's kind of a faff to do, but it looks really pretty. Adds like a little bit more visual interest than just a flat stockinette color work. So this I'm knitting in Plotulopi by Eastex, which is an unspun Icelandic 100% wool. It's quite rustic, so be warned. I really like it. I was really excited to knit with this, and I really like it. It makes really nice fabric. It's really pretty. Uh, I'm holding it double because it's kind of, so this pattern calls for a DK, and the Plotulopi is like between a sport and a fingering if you hold it single, and then kind of like a, a heavy DK light worsted if you hold it double, so I opted to have it a little thicker than a little thinner um, and I really like the fabric it's quite stiff which is fine um, but it's just really pretty that's a stitch marker because I will talk you through in a minute it's just a really pretty fabric I also love this color I think it's called light beige heather um, and I like that this yarn has kind of like a tiny little bit of halo on it you can kind of see right there because it has it's not spun so the fibers just kind of go however they want. Um, you can see it better almost on the yoke, how fuzzy it is. <laughs> um, so if you're super sensitive, I would not recommend it, but if you're not, it's really pretty and fun. 
Um, and the more I work with this yarn, the more I like it. I really want to use this yarn or maybe just um, regular Lopi to make the Badger and Bloom sweater by Ann Vensel. It's also a stranded color work pattern, yoke and then cuffs in the bottom, but all of her samples kind of have this like, they're 100% wool or they have this kind of like halo, but they're not with mohair. And I just think this would look so pretty. Um, that that sweater would look so pretty in this yarn. I haven't seen anyone make it with Plotilopi before, but I want to do it. That probably will not be a project that I do for a while because I'm starting to get tired of color work. I need a break from it after this, but maybe next year that will be on my to-do list because I really like that pattern. I really like a lot of Anne Vensel's patterns. She makes some really beautiful stuff. I love her spot sweater, colored crosses. She has so many really cool interesting patterns. But anyway, back to this. So um, I'm holding it double. So the yoke up here is of the brown. I've probably used like 60 grams. I have a little bit left, maybe more like 70. And then of the green, I have used quite a lot. I had to go buy another skein. Um, and I'm probably going to have to get, I have one more plate of the beige and a little bit left. So I'm probably going to have to get some more of that as well. But um, the sleeve, I have this marker in here still because you can kind of tell my decrease rate I needed to change. So I started decreasing every six rounds and then realized if I kept going every six, it was going to be too long. So I had to go to every four rounds, which is what this marker is here to tell me is like where I started decreasing a little faster. And I actually really like this shape in a sleeve where you kind of taper it off really quickly and it gets like this triangular shape. Um, there's a similar shape, the, the decreases in my coming soon sweater, which is a couple of videos ago are like that, where it's just like kind of a quick triangular taper. And I really like the look of it. So unintentional on this one, but I like it. Um, the color work is really pretty, really easy. You kind of do those pearl stitches again here on the bottom. So yeah, I have the yoke and one arm. Um, and I added short rows to this pattern. There are not short rows in the pattern, but I added some at the top neck, which in retrospect, I wish I had done a little differently because they kind of come around the front, which I don't love, but I don't think anyone will notice but me. And then I also added some more on the back body as well, just to make it a little bit longer because it fits better. So here it is. It's lovely. It's going to be a very lovely, thick, warm winter sweater. It'll be great for when I'm riding my bike because I get too hot if I'm wearing a coat. Um, but as soon as I stop biking, I'm immediately cold because I'm sweaty and it's cold outside. So this will be good for that to keep me nice and warm but not like gross and sweaty. So yeah, I'm hopeful to have this done by the end of the month, probably. I mean, this sleeve took me maybe like a week. Um, I mean, I did probably like, I did this much today. That's probably like three-ish hours of knitting. So I'm making progress. I think the body will be a bit of a slog, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. It's fun and I'm excited to finish it. <sighs> okay, and then my last work in progress I've been talking about for a very long time if you've watched my videos before, but this is a little sweater for my niece for Christmas. This is the good old raglan pattern. Don't remember the designer off the top of my head, but it's just a little classic raglan kid size. It's free pattern. Um, it's great. I'm making this just in this white. I'm pretty sure it's super wash wool that my mom gave me. Um, and once it's done, I have mm, probably like five centimeters to go on the body and then the ribbing and the sleeves. And then when it's all done and blocked, I'm going to embroider her name on it. Um, and I think it'll be really cute. So I've been working on this for a week and a half or so now. Um, and I was kind of going back and forth between this and my socks as my portable project that I take with me to school or on the bus. Um, so now that I've finished the sock, I'm gonna finish this and then start a hat project. So that's a good segue into my um, knitting plans. Um, I wanna make a hat and I was originally thinking I would make the Belle Fee hat by Espace Tricot. It's really pretty um, like cabled hat and I might still make that, but I did see today on my Instagram feed just this morning, 
a test knit call by a really small designer. It's actually two sisters. Their um, Instagram handle is Jose and Lada. And they just put out a call for like a twisted rib beanie that I think is really cute. So I did submit an application to do that test. So I might be knitting that instead. Um, but I just want to knit a hat. I have this. I probably showed it to you before. <laughs> I have this yarn that is an alpaca blend. Come on. It's like a chestnut brown. Well, it's a warm brown that I dyed with walnut husks from my walnut tree over my um, driveway. So I want to make a hat with this. I think it's a really pretty like fall color. It might look a little off with my hair like it's a little bit well no my hair is cooler color than this so it'll be fine. I only have 50 grams of this though so I probably will have to hold it double with something else. Maybe this silk merino. This is the last of my silk merino that I have which is probably like still a good 50 grams so yeah that may end up being like a heathered kind of hat. And then um, I want to make, I, so I was thinking, I really want to make a striped sweater. I've been wanting to make a striped sweater for a while now. And I've almost cast one on like quite a few times. Um, but, uh, and so I was thinking I would make the Marseille sweater by Petite Knit. It's gorgeous. Um, very classic shape. Looks like very professional, very store-bought, and it has thicker stripes in it. Um, so I was thinking I would do that. And then I was scrolling through Ravelry and I saw the hunko pattern by sari nordland i'm like really starting to get into her patterns they're really beautiful and i the more i see them the more i want to make them she just put out a test call for this really pretty like sweater with a zipper in the middle that i really want to make did not get exception to the test knit but i still want to make it when the pattern comes out um but yes her sweater is it's the hunko sweater or hanko sweater and it's also striped, but the stripes are really thin and it's two colors of stripes. So it's a very classic shape. I think it's um, knit bottom up or maybe it's top down, but you do the body and then pick up stitches for the sleeves. Um, and it's just really like a great shape and the stripes are like really thin. I think it's just two rounds of two colors and they're spaced out quite a lot, but they're really pretty. And then she has you bind off the um, ribbing in the contrast color with the Italian bind off. It's really pretty. Um, so I'm very excited to make that. I bought the pattern, which I usually do not buy a pattern until I'm about to knit it. But the pattern had just been released and she had a discount code. So I did buy the pattern and I'm going to use some cashmere to make it. Um, I'm a bit torn between two colors. So uh, I have this green cashmere which is 100% cashmere and I've already made a sweater with this yarn and I still have quite a lot left. Um, it's from a sweater that I got at the thrift store that was super felted and I took the time to pull it apart um, so I could reuse the yarn. It's a really lovely cashmere. Um, so I have this green but I also have this kind of periwinkle cashmere which I have quite a lot of, a whole sweater's quantity. Um, this is also an unraveled secondhand sweater. 100% cashmere um, and it's just so lovely so I'm not sure which color I want to do and I might this is the striping idea I was thinking was periwinkle as the main color with a green and white as the stripes or I might do like a brown and white I think I'm leaning towards the periwinkle as the main color because I'm just not quite sure if I have enough of the green to do a full sweater but I love them both. I think if I did the green, a periwinkle, like I, just something about this combination, the periwinkle and the green is really calling to me. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but like, aren't these, they're just, it's a really cool combination. The more I look at it, the more I like it. And I think I'm going to do this combo. Let me know what you think. There's some really, really cool color combinations on the projects page on Ravelry. Her testers did some really cool color combos. Um, and there's one that's kind of like a green like this. That is what inspired me. So that's what I think I'm going to cast on next when I finish my Cathedral Dome sweater. Because <coughs> I'm just really excited about this. And it kind of bumped everything else down my queue. So those are my big plans is a hat 
and this sweater. I think I kind of want to make some more socks. I might make some Christmas like gift socks. I was thinking I would make a pair for my dad and maybe a pair for my husband. But I'm not sure about that. So I'm kind of at a standstill on that. But I have plenty of stuff going on and plenty of things to be excited about. So I have not purchased any yarn this month except for some more Plotilope for my sweater. It's this green color. The colors, I didn't even tell you the colors. Um, the brown is marsh heather, which is cool. It's like a brown with flecks of green in it. I'm not sure that you can see the green, but yeah, there we go. It has like flecks of green in it. And then this green is called clover. And then I'm pretty sure this is light beige heather. So yes, I bought an extra skein of this because I ran out and I needed to get some. Got it from my local yarn store. Um, and then that's it. But I did want to show you um, an update. So last month I had talked about some skeins of yarn that I wanted to over dye. And this is what it turned out as. So it was kind of like originally, let me see. It was originally like this really light. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this. Like this kind of yellowy green. So I dyed over it with like a royal green and it turned out like this. Um, and I kind of tried to put some speckles in it so you can see like in here it's not focusing very well there's some darker bits um so it's very tonal and really pretty so i'm excited to knit this up i was originally thinking i would do the wild mint tea sweater from drops um and i did a gauge swatch and i was under like my gauge was off and i was worried that if i sized up <coughs> too many needle sizes then my fabric would just be really loose this is marketed as a DK weight um, but I would say it's kind of like a lighter DK mm, no it's probably true to DK I'm just not a great gauge of great judge of yarn weight but that's what this is and that sweater is made with a fingering and an out um a merino or not a merino a mohair so undecided on what I'm gonna do about that I may make another bigger swatch to decide because I really do like the design of that sweater it's kind of like a broken rib um, so there's not really sure on a plan, not really clear on a plan for this yet, but it's pretty. I really like how it turned out. It's like a little bit brighter than I was expecting. I'm usually more of like a muted kind of green like this. It's a little dustier, but I do think this is really pretty. It's very jewel toned. Um, so I'm excited to knit that up and I think it will look really cool with kind of the, like tonality in the yarn. So, yeah, that, I think, is all my updates, because, which is good because I'm losing the sun at an alarming rate, and it's Halloween, so I need to go pass out candy to the kitties. Um, so yeah, that's it for me today. I feel like I talked 100 miles an hour, but I was also racing the sun, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, um, and I hope to see you in another one. I will obviously be back with another update in November. I'm not sure that I'll have a ton of knitting time over the next month because it's very busy with school, but I always sneak in some time. So I will be back with another video in November. And until then, um, please subscribe if you'd like to, like the video, and I will see you soon.